Welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time, our heroes resting in the Adventurer's Guild, having successfully slayed their way through the upper level of a archaeological dig they were sent to clear out for some scientists to go and explore. They were, however, turned away from the second level and told not to return by some dark entity. Not to their concern, though, as they have happily returned to the warmth, light, and full bellies of the guild where they have slept the night away. We would pick up with this morning. <coughs> All right. Uh, Barry actually does not come down the stairs. Uh, Barry comes in through the front door and seeks out his companions. And he's like, you never guess what happened to me last night. Me lay down. Me was just about ready to go to sleep when me hear Freya's call. So me get up and go to nearest temple. Me pray all night. Me hear nothing. It's like me can't hear Freya when in Freya's temple. He was starting to get worried. But when dawn came, he stepped out of temple and immediately me hear Freya. So me end up taking oath of devotion this morning at dawn. Me very excited about it. Me now held to highest standard. Well, that's that's all fine and all, but my patron actually spoke to me as well last night. Through the tremors of the rock, I was given instructions. I must find these items! And Grimmel runs off to the nearest store in the guild. Me follow. Um, I'm sure there's a kind of a, an apothecary type of store. You know, they, they do have to take care of their members, so I'm, I'm sure you could find someone. And, you know, you... They haven't even opened their window yet, but, you know, you, you get there right as the... the owner, or the proprietor, whatever he is, is just, like, opening the outer door. You there! Do you have coal, incense, and herbs? Oh, yeah, those are all pretty basic. Yes. I need your finest. Uh, okay. Well, come on in. Right, and he march kinda... on it. Look for yeah. what I need. I also well, need a find... brass. You also need a what? A brazier? Brass brazier or brass Oh, brazier? to, I think, yeah. Brazier. brazier. <laughs> yeah. I can't pronounce things. Well, do you need to... Do you need to keep it forever, or do you, are you just mixing something? Because we, we, you can use the loner if you're just making something. It must be able to withstand fire! Uh, oh, yes, that, that's what they're literally designed for. I prefer to keep it. Oh, oh okay, then. Well, here, here. Here's your selection. And he takes you over, and there's, like, four of them on a shelf, you know, different sizes and fanciness. Is there, like, a pocket-sized one? Like, <laughs> Well, there's, like, a little... Yeah, there's, like, a little lantern-looking thing that, you know, you could basically uh, build a fire in. It's like those people that have the little paint can rocket stoves you know, that they use for camping. Mm. So, little gasifiers. So, yeah, there's there's that. You know, you could grab, or, you know, on the, the highest-end stuff that you probably can't afford, there's, like, a magical one that, you know, basically... It shrinks, fits inside a pocket dimension type of a thing. How much is that one? Like, oh, that that one's very expensive. Uh, let me check through it. No one, no one ever asked for those. That's I think that's like a thousand gold. Mm. That's not a very good price. Well, I think it, you it, it, up your manager. It is capable of existing outside of space time. What use does that do me? Anyways, I'll take the small one. 
Okay. And your uh, finest tall incense and herbs. Okay, well, the incense is over there. You can pick your flavor. Uh, I, I kind of like the rose one there. What power? What incense screams power? Oh, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, if you... And picks the one that he deems to be the most powerful scent. He goes with mint. <laughs> okay. Oh, you like the mint there. Okay. It burns my nostrils. All right. And then he finds some herbs, probably also mint because it smells the strongest. And then just a bunch of charcoal and brings it all to the counter in his little bird arms. Like, oh, that's uh, that's pretty impressive there. Do you want like a horn of plenty to carry it all in? No, they will soon be engulfed in flame. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, can I at least like put it in something for you? I mean, I, we can we can find some old linens or something to kind of keep this all together. I do not need help. Oh, okay then. How well, do just... I, how much do I need to pay you? I don't know. Don't make me do the math. We'll just say you have a, a fair exchange and it's all good. All right. Thank you. And then I hobble on out somewhere. Do I have to oh, go out okay. to the field to get to the apothecary? Well, yeah, I mean, he basically is the apothecary inside the guild. Like, okay, he's, it's all good. part of the, like, complex. But if you want to set stuff on fire, you might have. Yeah, if you're going to be burning something, you're going to want to go outside, probably either out to their private yard or, I mean, out into the streets and then somewhere. With all of my stuff precariously balanced in my hands, I stomp on up to um, Linda and go, Lena, where's the best place around here where I can be undisturbed for an hour? Oh, oh, undisturbed. Um, uh, well, well, what are you going to be doing there, dearie? Only fulfilling my patron's will. Well, yes, I see that, but are you going to be making a bunch of smoke? Uh... Um... I don't know, I've never set anything on fire before. Okay, uh... I'll tell In you my what. for a while. I'll tell you what, why, why don't you go to the shed out back and I'll just put a note here that you're in there and uh, that no one else to go inside until you're done, okay? Thank you, Lena. I will repay you once I have conquered the world and I march on off. That sounds good, dearie. <laughs> I turn to my... Uh, com I turn to my companions and go, Do not disturb me for an hour or you will suffer. March out of the guild to the shed that was indicated. Okay. All right. Well, you find a, you know, dilapidated shed in the back corner with a hole in the roof. And it's basically an isolated spot that you can close the door and do whatever you need to do. All right. I shut the door and get to work on my ritual. Awesome. All right. Others? Well, Pop Art Winkle's just been hanging out around the guild, <laughs> seeing what he can pick up, you know, doing cleaning duty. Fair enough. All right, you do some cleanup. Things go pretty smoothly for you. Uh, you hear people talking about how it's starting to get cooler out, and... Uh, there's some reports coming in on the road of people being attacked by, like, lumps of moss. Did Clark clean up anything of value? Yeah, sure, you can find a couple coin here and there, but Ooh, mostly Chinese. you've already done such a good job that it's taken care of.
Like, that's all you care about after hearing about that. You're just like, did he pick up anything of value? Like, Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Joel is kind of left him there, and he doesn't really have any particular interest in any gods or patrons. He's like, ooh, shinies. There you go. All right. Uh, I guess we're down. Fox Club doing anything? Yeah, that's the obviously only question. I am, obviously, I'm performing for people and trying to get money out of them. Well, there's not really anyone in in the morning, so... I mean, there's, you know, they're just kind of opening up. So I guess you could, like, tune your instrument. I suppose. I mean, the mystical tune of your people. Dun, 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 dun. Me following Grimmel around because me have nothing better to do. All right, so you just kind of stay outside and guard the door for Grimmel. Sure. All right. Well, all right. Well, let's skip the head an hour. Grimmel, how did it go? During my ritual, I focus on trying to think of the most powerful and fearsome creature that could possibly serve me in my conquest. By the end of the hour, I'm out of breath. A puff of smoke has appeared to douse my area of, from which I was doing performing my ritual. And then out of the smoke appears! <laughs> what? What is this? Toad! What? <clears throat> This must be a mistake, yes. There's no way the will of Zertan would have given me a stupid amphibian. It kind of stares at you a minute and then jumps forward, landing on your head right between your ears. What? Nah. I burst out from the door, almost slamming it into um, Barry and march to the guild with determination to find somebody to set this right. <laughs> awesome. Barry just sees Grimmel like, march out with a frog on his head. <laughs> we laugh. <laughs> you look funny, little Grimmel. It must be a mistake. I will see to it that it is a mistake. That good-looking frog on your head. It's actually not a frog, it's a toad. But, regardless, it is not what I asked for. As I guess as Grimmel sees it, the only person who's qualified to answer his question is Linda. So he just marches up to Linda. Okay. Is like, Excuse me, I have a complaint. Yes, dear. This toad upon my head. It is not what I've asked for. Okay, and, uh... You are a warlock, right? Yes. And you were doing the ritual of summoning for a familiar? Yes. Hmm. Are you aware that your patron sends you what you need, not what you want? There's no way that Zeratan would ever send me some useless toad! Let me put it this way, dearie. Does Zeratan know better than you? Uh, yes, of course. Well, there you go. Zeratan. I... Grimmel gets down when he... I do not understand Zer. He touches his hand to the earth. I do not understand Zeratan. Why you have given me this... Amphibian, but I promise that I will strive to understand why. Maybe you'll give me something better in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He uh, Grimmel takes the toad from off his head and kind of like stares at it and examining it and turning it over and like pulling at its limbs. Hmm. Not very, wait. Yeah. Not a very robust thing, is it? How big is this toad? I. Uh, it's, let's see, well, I mean, it's proportionate to your head, so it's probably the size, let's call it a baseball. 
ish, maybe a tennis ball. Mm. I will choose a name for you once the time has come, my familiar. Until then, I, I guess you do what you do. And I guess, I guess Grimmel just puts it back on top of his head and just kind of pouts about it for a little bit. It seems to just not care. It's kind of just like sitting there like, yep, this is my job. <laughs> Perfect. All right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, my All right. party what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, me gesture to Foxglove. Hey, Foxglove, come look at board. Tell us what jobs are available. Oh, yes, that's right. You simpletons can't read. I can. <laughs> I just don't want to. All right, I'll go to the board and I'll read the options, but only because I want money. Yes, more jobs mean more money. Or loot. Maybe someday you'd be rich, Bard. I'm already rich. I just want more money. Well, as you go over and there, you see first the two jobs that you had read before uh, that you didn't take. There was a, a former temple and a labyrinth job. And then the one that you had basically completed, you see one of the, like, guild sprites comes over and it rips that page down and it puts up a new page. And the new page is a, like, a traveler's call for basically clearing the roadway south of town because several people coming in have complained about being attacked by... Like some kind of a, like a living moss that's been coming out and attacking people. Mm -hmm. Well, what you guys think? Me thinking either temple or moss thing. Yay. <sighs> Both sound pretty boring. They're definitely not going to get me closer to my goal, so I guess you choose. Fox Club, what you think? I don't care, as long as it gives us money. Probably more chance for Luton lost the old temple. Fairy Man, what you think? What? What? White Winkle, like, looks up from counting his shinies on the table. Oh, uh, um, yes! Yes, what? Exactly! I guess Temple it is. Alright, we take Temple job. Oh, a, a, a Temple. Oh, that, that could be interesting. Me go up to Linda. Me say, Linda, we want temple job. Is it? Okay. Um, yeah, you'll probably be okay with that. Um, here you go is the map. Oh, well, that's right. She gives the writs. Now here's your writ for the map. And you take this over to the cartography and they'll show you how to get there. All right. Thanks, Linda. Yep. 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 Talk to you later. I know. Me go to Matt Man. All right. So the cartographer, he's just kind of like, "Oh, okay. Uh, you need to get there. All right. Here's the, here's your directions." And he lays it out for you. And you know, it's relatively simple. It's kind of one of those, you know, over the river and through the woods type of things. But you know, should be relatively findable. Okay. All right. Basically, follow the map and you'll make it. <laughs> this is you. a. We are going to screw that up. <laughs> no, I was saying this is this is a like a a Skyrim. You have a quest marker to follow, not a Morrowind. Here's a vague description. Good luck. <laughs> right. Let us go for glory. 
Yeah, yeah. All right. So you guys, you know, leave early enough in the day. It's not a problem. You know, you're going out and you're doing your hi-ho, hi-hos, walking down the path, looking all proud of yourselves. Like, I'm going to go and we're going on an adventure. Yay. <laughs> I keep uh, examining my new familiar, trying to comprehend in some way how it has managed to become my familiar. <laughs> hey, Elkin. I dare you to lick Toad. What? No, why would I lick the Toad? That's gross. Because I dared you. So? A truly evil Elkin, Warlock, would lick the Toad. That, that's now the familiars are kind of respected, you know, they're your companion in a way, and they help you fight. But I have no idea how this thing is supposed to help me fight. Maybe if you lick co Toad, you'll find out. Ow! Keep the Toad. And haven't you always ever noticed in like the movies, being evil always kicks up the IQ a few points? <laughs> Not in this case. <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyway, well, you, uh, let's say you get a ways out of town, maybe into the afternoon even, and let's see, roll, I'll just have everyone roll a perception check. Uh, 15. Minus, uh, nine. Box Club got a nat one. Me got 16. All right. Well, Fox Club and Poplard are just not paying attention. They're just like, yep, there's nothing there. Um, Fox Club, really quick, roll me a uh, deck save. It's another nat one. Oh my god. All right. Well, there's something in your path that you don't see. You trip on it and you face plant right down into a rock and you crack your skull. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I rolled a 1d4 and I got a 4, so sorry. So you just take four points of damage straight to the noggin. Two nat one seems fair for that. Yeah, I... I was hoping for a lower roll, but holy crap. Um, Alright, so you go down. Uh, Derry and Grimmel both saw it and took a look and were like, uh, that's, that something's not right there. And you guys kind of turned to the side and stopped, but now you just saw your companion fall down. Hello. Do you need help up, Foxglove? No, not by the likes of you pretty dumb of you to not see that. I mean, it was right there. What were you thinking of, Foxglove, that you did not see that? About how much money I can make. Something you wouldn't understand. No. Me serve goddess. That is highest calling. Okay. So something seems I... off? Yes, and in fact... All of a sudden, Grimmel, it's just, you can hear this because it's right, right between your ears. You suddenly hear a humming sound. Mm -hmm. What? And glance up, I'm assuming it's the toad. <laughs> yes, it's the toad and it's looking at the thing on the ground. Mm -hmm. What are you on about? Mm -hmm. I decide to investigate the thing on the ground. Okay. Hmm. Well. Ten. <laughs> Alright, well, you go and grab it, and you see that it is a... Like, a little tiny person. Not quite a brownie, but like a veg pygmy. And it is completely frozen in, like, awe, staring at the toad on top of your head. Hmm. Why... Does it not acknowledge me? Is it not, is it not scared of me? 
I kind of poke makes... at the little person. You do what? Sorry. I kind of poke at the little person. Yeah, you poke at it and it doesn't respond. Uh, it's totally just, it keeps staring directly at the toad between your ears. It's not responding. It's not like encased in anything, is it? No, it's just like, you know, the brownies, one of the brownies from the original Willow movie, but, you know, bigger. Oh. Kind of covered in moss and, you know, underbrush stuff. Hmm. All right, then. I uh, pick up the brownie. All right. He just keeps staring at your, uh, you know, at your toad. This happened to be the thing that Foxglove tripped over or no? Yeah, it that's was... it. It was okay. when it was on the ground totally in its, like, solid form. You couldn't see it. You know, it looked just like a rock or something. Mm, so there are brownies about. Well, it's not actually a brownie. It's much larger than a brownie. Ah. I take offense to that statement. Don't forget, Pop White Winkle constantly smells of brownies. Food, not the creature. That's right. Yeah, I, I figured. It'd be weird if you did smell like the creature. It does remind me, though, I, I do need some, like, angry anti-sweets activist to suddenly start yelling at him. Brownies! I hate brownies! Shh. Our mother was a brownie! Okay. Well, you're a smell of elderberries. Well, yeah. This doesn't true. have to really do. Does it? It doesn't have to what? Sorry. Sorry. It doesn't really have to do with what we're up to, is does it? No. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right then. I just put it back down and continue on my way. All right. As you continue to walk, you notice that the toad on top of your head has turned around and continues looking behind you as you walk away. Hmm. Guys, I think my toad is broken. It doesn't like to look the way it's going. But eventually turns back around. It just uh, doesn't do so until you've gotten pretty far down the road. an odd toad. When it does finally turn around, you notice that the humming has stopped. Hmm. Intriguing. I was just going, like, starting to like that humming. Add some musical tunes to our trip. Me know of hymns to Freya. You want me to hum along, hum, hum those for you? Oh, that could be fun. <laughs> Here, we can save everyone's ears. Do you want to just roll a performance check? Okay. Uh, be checking. Ooh. Me got a 19. Oh, yeah, you really feel that divine inspiration. Whatever that blessing that you took the night before, it is strong with you. You hum like a choir orc. <laughs> Seems like an oxymoron, but okay. Well, <laughs> Maybe is there anything else? Toad in order to ignore the hummings of whatever that is. Oh, we hum very good. What you think of that, Poplart? Hmm. Quite nice. You should do it more often. Okay, we need one more. Nice. All right. Well, you guys have a great time. And you eventually make your way all the way to the entrance. It is now dusk. The sun is setting. And... 
You are at the temple entrance. All right. We look at temple entrance. It's uh, stone. It looks like it started to have been carved at one point and then was abandoned midway through. Uh, do an investigation if you want to really Let's see how much detail I'm going to give you. Uh, this, this is not going to be good. <laughs> Me get negative one. Wow. All you can tell is that it's stone. It's got some, it's had some work done. It is, but it's stone. Is there a door? It's uh, just an opening. It's just an open hole that goes into a, uh, basically like a mountain, not quite a mountain, but a hillside, like the, uh, the Irish burials, you know, where it's an artificial mound with a door on one side. Okay. Like that type uh, of a look, you know, it's a hill that's been hollowed out. All right. Me go in doorway. Me look around. Uh, all righty. Will you poke your head in the doorway? And you look around. Let me get to the right thing here. All right. So there's kind of this semi. It's kind of a semi smooth stone, you know, where obviously skilled hands had come in and taken and start to work the rock and make it to where it was habitable and and nice but it was obviously never finished but as you look in it there's this like sweeping area that goes kind of up to your left and then turns to your right almost like this is meant to be an an entrance procession that comes into this space now do you keep going oh yes all right you it, it opens up into a kind of a wide a wide amorphous room you can tell that this whole place was actually not manually carved but was some kind of a a porous maybe lava flow or something that left it open and uh random shapes but someone has started to do work on it and in, in this space, which is goes all around you, some to the north, passageways to the south, to the east, but you notice in particular that there are very precise square holes cut into the ceiling and floor, and there's some dwarvish runes in on the wall that projects down on the north side. Uh, Grimmel, <clears throat> tell us what those runes say. It's properly. Yes. So, I use my invocation, uh, Eyes of the Rune Keeper, so I can read all writing. Okay. So I look at them. You... You look at the runes and you get a bit of a shiver and you turn and say, you say, it says they ate Giga. Or Giga. I'm not sure how to pronounce the dwarfish exactly. Eight? Yeah. Uh. Huh. I wonder what Giga is. Is it a particular dwarven dish? Was it That's pretty big to me. Was it an actual dwarf? The world may never know. Yes. Well, 
I think it's our job to find out. Let us let us go down that that hallway. All right. Which hallway is oh. that hallway? Are you thinking like east? Like kind of the north, maybe the south. So I'm guessing we entered from the west. Yes. Uh huh. And where are the rooms? Uh, they're on. There's like a projection that comes down on the north side. Looks like a, like the tip of Florida, and it's just kind of written on those rooms. They're written on that. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So really, we've got uh, northeast, east, and south. Yes. Okay. Um, let us try south first. All right. You start working your way through the jagged passageway that goes down to the south, and... The first thing that Grimmel notices is there's some a different type of runes, and you thankfully you can tell immediately that it says "good spot for ambush." Hmm. Everyone else, as Grimmel is looking at that, you notice that there are pale stalactites hanging from the ceiling. You guys might not want to walk under those. Why? What are they? Well, according to this rune, it says perfect place for ambush. Potentially, those could be booby traps. Why would someone want to trap boobies? Me pick up rock. Throw it at one of those pale stalagmites. All right, go for it. Give it a chuck. Give it a, uh, I guess you're just chucking it at any of them so you don't have to be too precise. Let's call it strength just to see if you break one. Be strength or athletics? Well, so I guess you could do athletics. I mean, I just, I didn't want you to use a dex based thing because it doesn't, you're not trying to be precise. It doesn't matter what one you hit. It matters how hard you hit to see if you break one off. All right. Well, okay. I can do strength. See how accurate I am. Um, 16. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You slam into one and it comes crashing down. And when it, comes crashing down you notice a old like a half rotten net is sprung and comes down over the top of it uh -huh. thanks for warning Grimmel mm. you're welcome I cannot tap potential future army people that will serve under me, but come to harm before the time is ready. All right. There you go. We continue. All right. So as you come down into here, you notice that there's kind of a, a northeast passage, an east passage, and a south passage that go out of this spot. Well, let us keep going south. All righty. Do. Right. Oh, you it here it widens out, and there is a deep pit that extends from just past the entrance of this room all the way down south, and over it there hangs a wooden platform and on that is a fountain decorated with six gargoyles so on this wooden platform 
There's a fountain with six gargoyles? Yes. So it looks like... So basically, you walk into the room, there's a big deep pit. You can walk around the outside, but someone's built like a wooden platform to the middle. And it, there may be something else there supporting it, but it looks like there's just a fountain in the middle with six decorative gargoyles on it. Actually... <laughs> Gargoyles are only gargoyles if they're on the outside of a building to prevent erosion from rainwater. So these are just statues. Well, actually, in D&D 5e, gargoyles are only gargoyles if they're creatures, but... <laughs> <laughs> but these are... Right. <laughs> well, we're, no right. we're playing fast and loose with the terminology. I know. I was just gonna be a nerd about it. I learned that recently in one of my games. It was like this one character was really like adamant about gargoyles being like that, and anything else that like it might look like a gargoyle, but if it isn't used for like architectural purposes, it isn't a gargoyle. And he was really adamant about it. And I just thought it was funny. <laughs> so now I just know, and I just you had to, you you mentioned gargoyles, and I had to say something. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> This reminds me of when I came across a hole in the ground and told my my mama, I said, look, a hole. And she says, well, that's a well, actually. Huh, no, no jokes. Oh, oh okay. I suck. <laughs> me not understand jokes. Me have no sense of humor. Just devotion I, to Freya. I, it's just because it wasn't what we expected to hear. I thought... She was going to tell you to crawl in it or something. Why would you tell me to crawl into a well? It's just rude. I don't know. To see how well you are? Ah, uh, that wouldn't be so, un, uh, so unheard of. And she does care about my well-being all the time. She seemed to be really worried about snakes, too. And kept saying, oh, if this was a snake, it would have bit you. Yeah. Maybe she was just trying to make sure you're well-adjusted. Hmm. Oh my god. The well puns need to stop. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Very oh, well. Wow. I'll leave him behind. Oh god! <laughs> I, I stopped. Alright, so... You see... You see this. You're at the entrance. Do you work your way around? Do you go across? What's your... What are you thinking here? Hey, Bloodlart. Yeah? You smallest from among us. And you can fly. Yes, I can. Why don't you go check out... With gargoyles and tell us, tell us about it. Okay. Uh, I guess I do an investigation. Sure, go for it. Eight. Uh, it looks like a fountain that has been abandoned long ago. You do notice that while the wooden platform does come out to it, that once you get here, you notice that it's actually been built, like carved out of a uh, stalagmite that was projecting up from the bottom of the pit. All right. Translation? It's kind of a pretty lame fountain. It doesn't really have water even. Sure, it's a fountain. It looks like a fountain. Okay, so it, uh, it looked like a fountain. Does it talk like a fountain? Yeah. So you, I don't know, do you want to talk to it? Oh, fountain. You hear a... <laughs> in response. Oh, it's a very chatty fountain. Falls back. Hey guys, this fountain can talk. Ooh. What did Fountain say? It said, uh. it didn't say it was very cha very uh, loquacious in his chats, just that it could talk. He's not very conversational. And quite a bit, no. Me not. That's what it means. Well, obviously, you don't speak Fountain. That well, is true. No, me not know what. No. Way, way, way shuts me. 
that word. I'm pretty sure it means um, you like to eat tasty food and drink lots of wine. That's what people always tell me, like, like I, I remember going to, like, some of these uh, parties to help, you know, clean up before, and they say, we are very loquacious while they're just eating and drinking and, you know, a bunch of all that stuff. So I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Mm. Okay. Me shrug. All right. So... Can I try to talk to the well or the fountain that talks? Uh, go for it. You there, fountain comrade! Join me in my con in my search for conquest, and I assure you, you will place highly among my army ranks. I roll for persuasion. <laughs> All right. Um, twenty-five. Whoa. Uh, while amazingly good, you just hear another moan followed by a dragging sound. Does that mean you wish to join me, comrade? You think it was a yes. There was a loud, uh... Yes, that seems like a positive noise. Where is noise coming from, Grimmel? Ah, it's true. Where is the noise coming from? It's actually coming from out of the pit. It's been, like, working its way from the far side where uh, Poplar was over to you, where you guys are. It's kind of the head of it. Mm hmm. Hey, Poplar, since you can fly, why don't you look down at pit and see what might be coming after us. Um, uh, uh okay. Seems kind of dark down there, but I can take a look. Kind of is down inside. No dark vision. And <laughs> then... <15. laughs> but the poly doesn't matter so much. Yeah, you can't... No, you can't make anything out. You kind of look around and you don't see anything. So what do you do? Do you fly back out of the hole and say, no, I can't see anything? Oh, well, I can go fly down to meet my comrade. <laughs> I have an idea. I have Let's have to check something really quick. You have a companion with dark vision. I don't think you need to worry about it. Ah, Actually, no, I, have I have an idea. Vision. So instead, I... Use my fairy magic. Because I realize I actually just got this skill. And I have to double check what exactly it does. I was like, hmm, mumbity jumbity, it's a cantrip. And. Da -da -da. Right into the pit, I go. Evilus uh, Stuffus. And I cast. Fairy fire. So every, each object in a 20 foot uh, cube within range, which is like 60 feet, is outlined in, say, green light. Okay. You see a hulking, about, you know, six and a half, seven foot tall, glowing green line coming towards you slowly. Oh. Mm hmm. Uh, there's a very big thing down here. It seems very slow. I'm, uh... It doesn't matter. This is important. He will do well in my okay. army. Okay, um, just in case, though, I I'm just gonna go hide over here. You can, you can chat now. I shall wait for my comrade to join me. Uh, Fox Club, since you're so very smart, why don't you look down in hole and tell us what it is that is crawling up out of it? Uh, I'm not going to. There's nothing exactly 
for me. Uh, how about your life? Be so we can prepare. I can deal with anything that's crawling out of a gosh darn hole. The the glow. What do you need? Lasts for He's going to join my the, arm. The, what do you need for prepare? The, the glow lasts for one minute, so uh, it's going to stay glowing for a little while. Not uh, indefinitely. Uh, me go towards hole. Me look down hole. Me try to see what is climbing up. Do you have uh, dark vision? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, you see this just kind of glowing image. Uh, you know, at first it's just the outline, but then it becomes so much more. And uh, it's kind of a, a fleshy creature with the um, the skin rotting and opening up, but still enough there to maintain like the shape that the creature once was. Don't you worry, friend. Once you join my army, you get medical benefits. We have health care. And a free <laughs> moisturizer with every new recruit. We'll get you up and going in no time. Join my army of darkness. Is there still just, like, no actual, like, understandable response from it? No, there's no languages that it under seems to understand. Mm. He's just being shy. All right. Well, he's going to make a attempt to climb out of the pit now that you guys are there and he's seen you all. Yeah. And it's, oh yeah, he climbs right up. I had him roll two times to make sure he made it and his second to get out was an at 20, so he definitely crawls his way out and to you. And let's see, he's probably gonna go for the largest target first. He'll start walking straight towards Barry. Oh. Um. One second. Of course, I, of course, I didn't write that thing down. Um. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> me. Me brandish, uh, Freya's holy symbol. Me do, uh, turn unholy. Okay. So it is each fiend or undead that can see or hear me within 30 feet must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, it becomes turned for one minute or until it, uh, takes damage. Okay. So, um, I don't know what the wisdom saving throw for that thing would be. It doesn't, huh. What's... What's your since wisdom? I'm, since I'm assuming it's undead. Yes, but what's your wisdom? Okay. Uh, my wisdom is... 13. 13... So I would say that's like the minimum. Here, let me let me just look it up really quick. Wisdom saving throw for paladin turn undead. Hmm. All right, I'm sure it's right here. All right, eight plus proficiency bonus plus wisdom modifier.
Oh, that's you're asking me. No, I'm telling you that's what the that's what it is. So you need to do that math and tell me what it is. It's eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. Eight. That's the oh, number eleven that you go by. What? Yep, eleven. All right. Well, in in any case, he does save with that. Oh well, that's too bad. Ugh. See, if it were me rolling, you probably would have failed. Possibly. Uh, Are you trying to attack my recruit? I just tried to turn him. Shh. Was not an attack. True, it's not technically an attack. All right, so my turn the unholy fizzles. Yes. It fizzles. Does anyone else want to do anything? I just wait with open on my new recruit. Actually, I might rummage right, through cool. my bag and see if I have anything to offer him at the spot in order to sweeten the deal. All right. <laughs> Show him just how benevolent of a ruler I will be. It's my trial period. Like a sample. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Foxglove or Poplart? Poplart's just hiding as best as he can. Okay. Sounds Give me good. a second. Looking through spells. Okay, I will look at this thing and I will cast Thunder Wave. Why are you attacking my recruit? Awesome. Go for it. You know Thunder Wave goes from yourself, right? Yeah. It'll hit everyone around you. I'll just step in front of everybody before I cast it. Simple as that. Uh, that is a 15 to cast. I'd say that's successful. See? It's a 15 foot cube originating from you. Hmm. So I'll just run up to it and then it's yeah. hole. Oh, it's in the hole? No, no it, just... it, it crawled out of the hole. Yeah. Okay. So I like that. You run up to meet it and then hi! Bam! That is ten damage, by the way. Alright. Does it actually get pushed back because of the thunder wave? I think it actually does. So maybe if you knock it back into the hole... Yes, it's coming. pushed 10 feet back, so it flies back into the hole. You basically, like, it's like running up and giving it a belly bump. Yep. <laughs> Why are you attacking my recruit? It smelled bad. So, you smell bad, and I don't say anything about that, do I? Just did. I felt. <laughs> All right, it tries to crawl back oh, up. It has to make, it has and to make can't get its footing. The creature has to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, seven. It does not save already, so it does take ten. <laughs> yeah. Does it take fall damage, too? I don't know uh, how deep the hole is. It's not really capable of receiving fall damage. Okay. So there's that. Cool. So anyway, so it falls in the hole and it starts climbing back up. Yep. And it it slipped at first, so it, it loses a round. Alright. Um 
Well. Ermol continues to yell at Foxglove. <laughs> Uh, Barry kind of stands at the edge of the hole and, and readies his sword so that the minute that its uh, head pokes up within range, it's, he's going to take a mighty swing down onto it. Okay. Stop attacking All my right. thing! Alright, we'll uh, let's roll for this and man, it slips again. Alright, we'll just say that it I'll just roll a third time. There, third time I finally made it. He's getting some purchase, pops his head up, and right as he does, you bring your sword down. All right, me roll. Well, you get to attack with advantage on this one. Oh, uh, me think first roll will be fine. Um, that okay. is 18 to hit. Yeah, that, that's definitely fine. All right. One D ten. Uh and me do eleven damage. Nice. Yeah, you bring your, your sword down and it kind of tips its head, causing you to glance a hair off to the side, but you bury your sword right down into its shoulder, splitting into the meat. Guys! I swear, once I take over the world, you all will face repercussions. Okay. All right. Um, perfect. Uh, me, no, not perfect. Me, me, step back. Actually, me can't. Me just did action. Never mind. All right, you step back. He gets knocked down, and I'm gonna roll here. Uh, he is able to start pulling himself up. He doesn't quite leap up like he did before, but he uses up most of his movement, gets back to the surface, and starts to walk. I'm assuming Foxlove had moved back away from the edge at some point. Yes, yes, I had. Yeah, there's no reason for me to stay there. So he's uh, he's up and he extends an arm out towards Barry to make a move towards him. But he's out of movement before he can get there. Okay. I will put myself between this guy and my party members. To stop people from trying to hack him in the head. You guys are being mean and inconsiderate. The goddess is goddess of life. This, this undead thing is an abomination to my goddess. My goddess decrees it must die. Your face is an abomination to me. <laughs> Leave me alone. He's a recruit. How would you feel if you were trying to go to a job interview and suddenly... The other is attacking you. So knock it off. And I turn to a fan. I'm like, I'm sorry for my companions. They're very rude. They will definitely face repercussions for their actions. They will face consequences. I will not let this go unnoticed. Please do not take this as a representation of my brand. <laughs> it stops for a second and cocks its head, looking very confused. You remember me? I was yelling down to you at the hole for you to join my, uh, my quest for conquest. I thought that had a nice ring to it. Sounds good. Wait, did he, does he talk or no? That's just you. No, that was just me saying that. No, he does not talk, but he does start reaching forward for you. Puts both hands out to, like, pick you up. Hey, hey no touching. I may be benevolent, but I don't like touches. I'm not a huggy kind of person. Doesn't seem to care. He's still reaching for you. going to like wrap his fingers around your little owl wings. I smack his hand away. You, you hear a... Ugh! Ugh! Well, that's what you get. You were warned. 
See, these are the kinds of consequences that my companions will face later. Once we're not in the middle of an interview. He goes, he moves in even faster to try to make a grab. And that is a 15 to grab you. Uh, yeah, that works. Well, you can roll a deck save if you want to try and dodge away or strength to contest it. Uh, we'll do... I mean, they're the same. I'll do dex. Nat 20. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you roll out of the way as his hands clap together and makes a fleshy slapping sound. I don't think this guy understands common. This your recruit it is a common problem we face. You uh, can you control him or not? Hmm. I can try, but I don't think it's my turn anymore. No. Uh. So Barry, it's up to you if you want to try something or pull back or what do you want to do? Uh, me pull back. You know this. This uh, Grimmel's recruit. Uh, me wait and see what happens. Yeah. All right. So I guess everyone pulls back and lets him keep lumbering forward. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Grimmel is still kind of closest to him. Yeah, but Grimmel just kind of rolled out of the way. So he's going to try and go forward and grab Grimmel again. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I guess he'll use Grimmel. So that is a fourteen to try and grab you. I believe that works. Well, you can try and dodge again. Uh, let's do strength contest. Then. Okay, you can try and. Like, let him grab you and then fight it 19. out. Oh, yeah. You're able to... He grits his hands on you and you're able to get away. All right. One moment. All right. So... And I... So I have touch which like it forms like a cold hand that does like a slight damage can i beach slap him with a chill touch attack <laughs> oh yes please do this all right <laughs> that's also an natural money <laughs> oh my god jesus christ <laughs> i just rolled a 20 18 20 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, bitch, slap him with chill touch. <laughs> Let's oh see. <laughs> so normally, eight, but this is it doubles, right? Yes. Well, or you roll again and see if you accidentally kill him. Uh, that's eight total, eight necrotic damage. Unless you wanted to roll again and see if she accidentally kills him, which would be hilarious. And because he's undead, he now has disadvantage on attack rolls against me. Nice. Uh, I think she'll probably keep him, but yeah, he's he's definitely not doing hot. <laughs> there, have you come to your senses? Now, are you going to serve under me, or do I have to kill you and execute you here for your disobedience? You hear him kind of, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I will wait to see his actions since I don't understand. He kind of turns looking defeated after getting cold bitch slapped and kind of stumbles back towards the pit. <laughs> I take it that he does not wish to be my recruit, but at least he has given up this time. And I turn on my heel and walk away. So, right. Grimble, if he's not going to be a recruit... You want me to take care of him? Mm. You can if you want, but he is no longer worth my time. 
I mean, this is part of our job. We must clear out this old temple. Hmm. I suppose, but he seems very pitiful right now. Uh, me not care. He's still abomination. Hmm. I suppose I do not mind. Sorry. He has disobeyed his potential master and therefore has lost my respect. Me attack! All right, you attack. With sword. Ooh. It's going to be a bad day for, for a zombie dude. Um, that is 25 to hit. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good hit. All right, and you roll for damage. Uh... Yes, that is 13 slashing damage. Wow. Yes, we roll good on that too. Yeah, you take a bunch of chunks out as you come cutting through him on his backside as he was moving away. He reaches out, kind of stumbling, trying to move further. Someone else want to just hit him real quick? Poplar Twinkle, you got I this? I can. I mean, I've been hiding in just watching the whole thing the whole time. All right. I roll to attack and I roll a 12. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. Right. He's very scared of what's happening and um, just kind of ah! and shoot, shoots a bow and it doesn't work. <laughs> I suppose I suppose Foxglove will try to stab him with her rapier. You're just like I've had enough of this crap. Yeah. Sixteen to hit. Yeah, that hits. Nice. Five damage. Yeah, that's all I really needed. He goes down. Down, you basically are like, this is dumb. You skewer him through, and as his body goes limp, it rolls forward and then slides right back down the embankment of the pit. Ugh, good job, Foxglove. Nice strike. Serves him right. <laughs> For not recognizing how wonderful an opportunity I granted him. Uh, maybe you need higher standards in recruiting. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. So far, I only have you idiots. Yo, not true. You also have Toad. Well, Toad isn't really a recruit, more as he is my servant. As a familiar, he is bound to me. We have a contract. He is not really a recruit, more as an extension of my own being. You recruited him supernaturally? Yes, but he was also gifted by Zaratan. All right. Anyway, uh, let us continue. To be fair, I, I have to. people nobody wants to join. So this is what I've resorted to. All right. So what are we looking at here? Um, are we looking at just kind of stuff to the west, and looks like three passages to the south? Yes. All right, well, let's try, uh, let's try Northwest to begin with. Okay. You skirt around the edge of the pit and into a room that it's just kind of wraps around. So the other, that other Western entrance exit, whatever you saw is obviously just part of this. And this wraps up, and all the way in that northern corner, you see a, a pile of things that look out of place. There's a series of, like, embossed draconic runes on the wall, and below that are some old, like, earthenware bowls with various pieces of imagery scrolled upon them. There's 
some coins that look like they have weird symbols, things that predate anything you would know, and some, like, what looks like decayed linens and dyed silks with patterns and symbols that you've seen before, far away in another dungeon. Ooh, me have bad memory here. Uh, Grimmel, what, what do dragon runes, what do runes say? <laughs> I'm glad you asked and recognize my amazing importance. <laughs> All right, what did they say? <laughs> Uh, you look at the the runes and uh, you can't really trans. So dragon runes aren't like you know dwarvish runes where they spell out words. These are more like trying to convey an idea. And this one is basically says like night mother. Hmm. I give a rough translation back to the party. No. Okay. Me remember now. This, uh, this was in last dungeon we were in. Me sense connection. You're saying this dungeon is connected to the other one? Why didn't we see a tunnel? Not that kind of connection. I think there was a mention of Night Mother in Last Dungeon. It was that that uh, one weird one weird dude. It was his mother. Uh, maybe uh, maybe people are just really sleepy around here. You know, you ever think about that? You make no sense. Maybe women only give birth at night in this area. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Mita, I don't understand you, little fairy man. Wait. No. Let us continue. Wait, mothers can give birth not in the middle of the night? Apparently. Is my whole the dead hour of night. Any dayborn baby is immediately cast off from the family. Hmm. Aren't you hatched from egg? Yeah, they keep us sustained. And compressed in a shell until it's the dead of night. Ugh. My Ooh. poor cousin Reggie was cast out that way. I've only ever seen him in the day market since. Bad guy. Poor story. Nobody ever wants to end up like Reggie. Sounds horrible. Being, being named Reggie. It is. Yes. He does not get the cool warlock name that is natural with our family. He has been cast out as Reggie. <laughs> the birth certificate stapled to his forehead like a post. Oh, oh poor Reggie. It sounds like cool. This is the burden I have to bear. And the worst thing. When he went out, all he had to survive on was Broccoli, and the name stuck. They still call him Reginald Broccoli. Oh, you funny, funny little Alkin. All right. It's not a funny story. This is one of great Sorry, I... Reggie will never live as part of his family ever again. Reggie will forever roam the streets. Even as a merchant, he still lives among the streets. Well, Agent where else will Green? merchants sell their things? Shouldn't they be on the streets? Some, uh, somewhere out there is that, like, super Star Trek fan that happens to listen to this podcast and gets my hilarious joke. But Actually, my friend does love Star Trek and has been meaning to re listen to our podcast, so... <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> One day, <laughs> once she catches up. <laughs> Anyways, enough about Reggie. It's a sad tale, and it makes me depressed thinking about it. The life I could have had. Well, you lucky if only you'd been cast out. Oh. Well, no, I'm very happy to not have been cast out, so I can prove my family wrong! Reggie will never belong to our family. Even by blood, maybe, but never by title. 
He will never become a renowned warlock. I will prove that I'm the best in my family. And that I will choose exile myself. As much more prideful than being thrown out, out of your own will. Against your own will. Okay. Uh, well, we getting, we getting sidetracked. Let us continue mission. Uh, let us go down Southwest Tunnel. All right. So this is another situation where all three of the visible passages from above appear to go into one giant room as the, uh, basically what looked like passages were just giant stone columns that you were able to pass into. Now, what's interesting about this place is the moment you step in, you notice that there are alcoves cut across the entirety of the swath of the kind of southwestern wall. All of the natural formations of the rock have been used to create uh holding points uh spaces that they can stick you know candles or offerings or whatever there's appears to be an old rusted out axe on the far eastern side that had been put in for an offering at some point and oh and then in some of the coves appear to be other things like the knob of a door or a single padlock, but every little cove is is filled. Think of it like um, the place where they place the eggs in Indiana Jones Temple of Doom. You know the sacred rocks. There's like those little alcoves, mm -hmm. but there's like a whole crapload of them all the way across here. All right. <clears throat> uh, me check out Axe. All right. It looks very old. Do you pick it up or you just look at it? Uh, let me try and sense if uh, there's any magic coming off of it. Okay. You gonna do an arcana roll for that or? We try! Oh, uh, uh, five minus three is two. Uh, nope, you sense nothing. Okay, we leave Axe alone. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, me look around alcoves, see if anything is interesting. Uh, mostly a lot of trinkets, just, you know, common household things, uh, representatives of people in their daily lives, you know, things that they would have used a lot, you know, the doorknob to enter and leave their house, the, a stack of buttons from their clothing, um, it's just all sorts of just random household objects. Okay. Yeah. Me think this boring. We go back way we came. Anyone else? Is there anything? I shiny? guess Fox. Uh, yes, there is something shiny. What was? What did Foxglove say though? Real quick. Uh, Foxglove is following Barry out. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. So, as you guys follow out, Pop. But yes, either you do see something Ooh, shiny. Shiny. What is it? They go over and just Well, it's like a like a it's called a, like a crystal chunk of crystal. Ooh. You know, like a crystalline doorknob type of thing. Oh, very nice. Pick it up. Alright. Uh you grab it. And I need you to make a... Let's just do a quick constitution check. Eleven. Okay. Uh, let me do this. 
you reach in and you grab it and you pull it out and you suddenly find yourself getting tossed across the room 12 feet back and take uh, 13 lightning damage. Ow! Oh, that was uh, angry shiny. Hmm. I see shiny. See here, I have a small bag with me. Not going to give up that easily. Go and I try to scoop it into the bag. Okay. Uh, dex check. Or sleight of hand, sleight of hand. Oh, sleight of hand? Okay. Uh, 25. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> Serves you right, shiny. <laughs> And just kind of fluttery back, like, <laughs> still a little crispy. <laughs> Making my way back to the party. So, uh, you guys, uh, I eventually caught up with you guys are walking across the room. You get caught up to by Poplart, and you suddenly smell something that's like burnt rubber. Uh, smell of mama's cooking. Probably my hair is a bit singed and everything Ugh. as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm standing. I'm probably up. still smoking a tad, considering that took out like half my health. Yep, over half my health. <laughs> hey guys. Poplar, yeah. you smell bad now. Uh, me like your your regular smell. Smell like brownies. Make me hungry. Now it smells like burnt brownies. <laughs> yeah, not like that so much. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I'm not sure how to respond to that. It's a little rude. <laughs> All right. Uh, me go north, back around hole, into other second room, and. Uh, me try kind of southeast passage. Okay. Uh, sorry, I did laugh at all that. It's just great. Oh, man. All right. So this, uh, the space is, is large and cavernous, it opening up to a kind of a huge central space. From where you are at when you first enter, it just kind of appears to go on and on but here you see a well just beyond where you enter this space it looks like it is very well built as in it's like someone probably found a hole and they brought in really nice hewn bricks and created a space that defined this is a well now, around it are several corroded iron spikes that are kind of littering the ground. Hmm. We think that ought. And as you look beyond the space further in, you notice straight across from you there is a kind of vertical wall due east and it has some writing on it. Mm. Uh, Foxglove, can you read writing? I'll try. Can I read it? You can. It says... Bryka died here, the best among us. Alrighty, I'll translate that to the group. But there's also something that you can't quite translate. As you're standing here, you can almost hear like the sounds of horns faintly coming from out the rock where the writing is. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, who playing music? 
Oh, you can't hear it. Oh. You're across the room. Only only she can because she went over, read the thing, and is standing close enough to it that she can just barely hear these horns coming out of where the, those words were read. Well. Yeah, and? What do you do? Go back to the group. I don't know. I already translated. You just told me to read it. Well, I read it for you. I mean, it's kind of unusual to hear horns coming out of a rock, so I figured maybe you'd have some. If you there. guys walk close enough, you could hear it too and make your own assumptions. I don't get paid enough for that. You get paid? We all get paid. That's why we are adventurers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, paid too. No, I didn't. Well, are you all hanging out next to the well? Um, let's see here. Well, yeah, I guess. Um, are the spikes just are they laying on the ground or are they actually kind of stuck? They just no, around. they're just scattered around, laying on their sides. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're just kind of hanging out by the well. Okay. Want to do anything? Oh, okay. Well, if nothing happens, then I guess no, you just, it's a it's not a gazebo. It's just a well. No, I know. I was just <laughs> waiting. If you know, because you know, sometimes you know, just bad things happen. So you know, all of a sudden we're attacked by something or whatever. So, all right. Um, so after uh, Foxglove's lackluster translation, um, I think maybe we. Take the southeast passage. From here? Okay. All right. You take that way, and it winds you around into actually a rather substantial dead end that is a huge... A uh, room that you enter from basically the west side, and it goes straight ahead of you for quite a distance before also going north. Now, here, you notice as you come in basically to the entrance that someone has started really polishing the floor tiles here. These look more like a checkerboard pattern than anywhere else uh and right above you on the north right as you come in there's some writing that's been scrawled on with some charcoal and you notice that on the south side there is a pile of like wax blobs you know just like candles that have melted into puddles all right me not trust checkerboards. Me find rock, roll across floor. Okay. You are able to find a rock here. It's relatively easy. And you roll across the floor and just do me a straight 1d20. Um, four. Four. Uh, yeah, you toss it in and it Bounce, bounce, bounce. Nothing happens. I mean, you roll the rock into a room. All right. Um, we step into a room. All right. Well, as you first come in, yeah, you notice that this place is huge and that it really expands upward. As you get further in... Uh, how about just about to where there's a center column that kind of divides the back from the front? You can tell that the builders were using it as a natural divider. That the back area was like for coming in and the whole northern area was for uh, seating. And at the very most northern point is a slightly raised area with a angled down like stage. Uh me go check out stage. Okay. 
you go up there and you jump up on the stage and roll me a religion check. <laughs> That's funny. You would think that, you know, me being a paladin, you know, I'd be really high in religion. Uh, apparently not. So I rolled a six, and then my religion is minus three. So three. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, you all of a sudden, after jumping up there, you hear this, this voice, like, in place of where you had previously heard your, your deity blessing you, and you hear this, Curses! Get out! You do not belong! This is not your place! And it starts giving you just a splitting headache. Uh, me retreat. Me say, me just doing job! Me get off stage. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you run back across the room and you're holding your head the whole time because it's just, it's almost like you know, you've got little psychic pins and needles stabbing you in the brain. Me not like. Anyone else want to try something? Uh, they say, hey there, Mr. Uh, er, uh, Alter thingy. Uh, how you doing today? I'm not really sure how this whole religion thing works. I can tell you it's, uh, you're not Marky Mark talking to a plastic plant. I mean, it's not going to respond in any way. You're going to have to, like, you know, do something. Do something? Find this something. I'm just saying that you can, you, if you talk to it, it's not going to do anything. It's like, you know, talking to your desk or a cat. Oh, we, we feed it? Sure. All right. Uh, dump the shiny crystal onto it. All right, you toss the shiny crystal up onto the stage. Nothing happens. Right? Oh, well, I'm not just going to leave it there if nothing's happening. So I, uh, like, scoop it back into my bag. You do that. Nothing happens. Oh, this doesn't uh, seem very interactive. Boring. Let's go find more shiny stuff. Oh, me know that stage hurt. Me not going back up there. That be someone else's problem. All right. Uh, apparently, me thinks this room is clear. Me go back way, way we came. All right. Everyone else just kind of like, okay. My toad familiar, do you know anything? You get no response. Nah. Someday I will strive to understand why on earth you are my familiar. Maybe if you lick toad, you get enlightenment. That's not how you it know. works. <laughs> because it's not. I come from a long line of distinguished warlocks. Oh, no, one of works. my cousins once licked a toad, and he was, like, said he was very enlightened much for, more afterwards. So, I mean, you never know. I'm going to pass on that. He was so enlightened that he lives on Mount Celestia now. <sighs> All right. Well, me go back into the other room. 
Uh, me try uh, East Passage. Uh, kind of the northeastern one there? Yep. Okay. I just, just making sure. Cause I'm still kind of just laughing at everything. All right. Uh, you walk into a space that opens up before you to mostly the north. And in it, there is a, a tapestry of a material that you've never seen before. While everything else here appears to be more or less rotten, this appears to be held together extremely well and in surprisingly good condition. It is a series of geometric patterns and below it are several pieces of rotten bread. Ooh. A lovely snack, but I already ate. Me, uh, me not to understand tapestry. Me not interested in pieces of bread. So, the tapestry, in addition to being a series of geometric patterns, it only appears to be those ge geometric patterns when you are close to it. When you are further away, it appears to... Oh, oops. It appears to be a um a singular giant circle uh. eh. it not monster not part of job me uh me shrug say this room clear go back way me came oh hold on oh, there is a continuation uh, to the east sorry i having okay. trouble with my computer over here Okay, uh, me continue going east. All right. So in this space, as you continue, you, you push eastward, there is, in the dead center of the space, a demonic idol with ruby eyes that appears to be staring at you as you come in. Uh. There appears to be some kind of writing up on the north wall. Okay. Uh, Grimmel, can you read writing on the wall? I suppose. What does it say? It says, Jade Black Silver Ruby. Black Silver Ruby? I don't understand. I don't have any of those things on me right now. Maybe he's asking for an offering. Me not know. Something to think about. Lightwinkle just flies up and tries to pry the eyes out of the statue. Make a wisdom check. We're a very intelligent party. Do, do, do. Ten. <laughs> a booming voice rips through your ears. And it's you hear this. Get off of me. Ah. It, uh, I, I, yeah. I'm not on you. You will do as I say. Present a blood sacrifice to this idol. A blood sacrifice? Um. Yes. So you're compelled to do it since because of your... your uh, you didn't save on your wisdom check. So you're compelled to find a means to give a blood sacrifice to the idol. Right. Light turns to... Hmm. Not sure who. Uh... Would be good. Ah. Mr. Bearback! Come here, please! We must appease this shiny thing! No. 
any sense this thing is on uh, it's really really shiny and it's asking nicely you should do it me not uh, care. come on you know you want to i mean how are we going to complete the quest if we don't do a little bit of what it asks no well, does anyone else want to? I mean, we, we, we need to do something. I mean, what about that toad thingy? No. He's my familiar, gifted to me. He, she. What gender is this toad? I, I take the toad off my head to try and see what gender I it is. I thought you hated it. You're, you're, you're Wait, constantly you saying you hate me? it. And uh, oh, I, I, I'm not kind of getting mixed signals right now. Nevertheless. Hey, to me from Zaratan. Maybe Zaratan gave it to you. But do you have any idea of how you would sex a toad? What? How do you sex a toad? I don't know. I just don't want to misgender the toad. It is my familiar, after all. Oh, I mean, I, I don't think, I it think cares. that Zaratan gave you this toad specifically for this you quest. Ever think about that? Oh. The toad be protected by me. You are giving very weird mixed signals right now. Like, I hate this thing. It's so worthless. Oh, but now Zaratan gave it to me. And oh, we can't use it in, the, in Zaratan's will. Well, yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be with me as a gift from Zaratan. No, we're not using it as a blood sacrifice. Well, you don't know. That it's asking for a blood sacrifice because it only spoke to Hopwort. Huh. I know he wants blood. How do you know it wants blood? Well, how? Because you're. He just he just wants you to get yeah. over there by the shiny. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. I... Hopwort. Hopwort, why are you? Why are you trying so hard to get us closer to that because unholy it's thing? Shiny. Is that not good reason? The shiny is good reason, but really? I don't trust. Says the thing who always says the one who always says, "I want to do evil," but as soon as you see a nice looking little shiny altar that you say is evil, you're like, "Oh, well, I'm not really that evil." See, I knew you were good. Evil that acts against me is not the right evil. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and the enemy of me is my enemy, and so on and so forth. I have my own agenda. I do not bend to the will of anything else, regardless of whether it is evil or not. All that matters is that yeah, so I. How do you know evil. this thing is working against you? Because if it's evil, it mostly it likely has my own, its own agenda you, as well, and does not wish to regard my well, agenda. I in suppose a nice way. you don't want to have any more followers in your army, and you're willing to give up your crusade. I mean, uh, that's that's between you and your god, I suppose. But I mean. That's your call. I thought you wanted to get more followers. Yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. But not this one. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. One. So you're giving up on your army. I should raise my standards. Mm -hmm. No, that was me. Poplart, what are you trying you to do? You just want us all to come over here and check out this amazing shiny statue. Oh, why? Why not? Are you afraid? Look, it's rock. See? It's smooth and shiny. Are you saying you don't want gold and riches and, and all these, like, look at this, look at these eyes. Let's look at the eyes. Yes, you already tried to yeah. pry those eyes out. And oh, then something well, happened. Well, maybe, but uh, maybe not. Maybe you will find out if you get a little closer. Don't you feel like this statue needs some love? Right. No. No. No, me don't give me love. Okay. So we, ha we, we have he one, one person point. who's like suddenly giving up on their whole aspirations to start an evil army, and another person who's suddenly saying, Oh, we don't actually believe in spreading love. I see what your dedications are like to your patrons. Do you want me to destroy Is that idol? Showing love? I can destroy idol no, if you want. But how is that spreading love? 
could be actually rolling persuasion against these. You guys are acting too smart. <laughs> oh my god. All of it is ridiculous. Um, Alright, yeah, let's let's just say, Poplite, you failed to convince them all because we don't need to roll for this. What, yeah. You, you can fail to convince them all so you hear the that voice again. You! You must be it! Come! Release your blood onto this statue. Oh, fine. Look, this is all you guys are so afraid of. And he just kind of takes his dagger out and kicks his finger and goes, boop. See? Blood. It's all just a little bit of blood. What's so special about blood? You think you have to, like, slice through your whole hand and not be able to grip anything? And you're like, ah, that's the only way I can make a sacrifice. Yeah, I've never understood that. It's yeah. just a stupid movie trope. Exactly. Anyway, uh, yeah. But you place the blood onto the statue, and in that spot, it gets absorbed first directly into the stone, and then the stone begins to twitch and move and twist, and it writhes and turns around in its movement twist behind it and you see far back in the other room behind you suddenly a something has opened in like the ceiling and it looks like there is just a stream pouring down to which it goes over to and it begins to to drink lapping up this fluid that's pouring in like a dog and you see that stone as it does so become more and more flesh-like and you see this this creature in its true full demonic form take shape in front of you and it begins to breathe oh finally free and that is where we will end tonight's episode whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh my i i gotta say i am really enjoying uh this season so far um i just i, I just feel like we're just a bunch of bumbling nincompoops just kind of you know bouncing from one thing to another <laughs> oh i love it you know it, the thing is, when you guys get really into your role playing, and I don't have to say anything, you you guys just all start interacting with each other. I love it because it's just like, oh yeah, this is working. Yeah, well, I'm so happy with how well I rolled today because it would have been like so bad if I had not nailed those things I was trying to do. But because I nailed them, I think it ended up so perfect. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, yeah, I mean, ditch slapping with cold hands is pretty damn funny. <laughs> he, just, he just walks away, just gives up, and just kind of slips <laughs> away. Respect my authority. I had to with a nat 20 with that. Jeez. Oh my goodness. That's too good. But yeah, Poplar Twinkle trying to convince us to be sacrificed reminded me of the video that I sent in chat. <laughs> Oh, oh! I just got it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> no, I'll watch it. From Studio Three, it's pretty funny. <laughs> This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening. Exactly like you would expect. <laughs> Gloriously ridiculous. So fun.